Hey guys, I'm Igor and welcome to my channel. I'm really excited about the new Nanrobot Lightning. I recently unboxed it and uh, actually I didn't tell you anything about the specs or my riding experience. That's what I'll be doing today. I hope to deliver you the best possible in-depth review. We will be covering pretty much everything, pros, cons, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, who is it for and basically all you need to know about this model. I will be giving away this super practical Wildman bag. To participate in this giveaway, you just need to subscribe if you haven't and then leave a comment about my review in the comment section. To be honest, this bag is my favorite scooter accessory. Based on my experience, this is a must have for everyone. Let's do it guys. Today I'm going to answer all your questions about the NAND Robot Lightning. I put in countless hours into learning, examining and riding the scooter over multiple days so I'm ready to put that knowledge into my review. If you check other models by Nandrobot, we see uh, D6+, Plus, D4+, Plus, uh, LS7. The Lightning is the most portable and affordable of the whole group of the Nandrobot lineup. It definitely has some great features that make it more than just another electric scooter. The scooter comes very well packaged, I have a separate video for the unboxing, long story short the packaging is perfect. And here is the most exciting and important part, its performance. Did it disappoint me or not? Well, I'm a huge fan of high-end scooters and honestly I was a bit skeptical about the Lightning at first. But after riding the scooter for a couple of days, I would say my opinion of the Lightning is now way better than it was at the beginning when I first got it. I will quickly go over the main spec so you'll understand what we're dealing with. It has two brushless 800 watt motors with that Nandrobot logo printed on the motor hubs. It features 18 amp power, 48 volt battery. Its advertised range is 25 miles. The max speed is 30 miles per hour. It has two charging ports, super smooth swing arm type suspension and solid tires. Well, that sounds like a full package to me. The advertised max speed is 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour and I actually managed to reach 31 miles per hour so big thumbs up to Nandrobot for that, usually scooter manufacturers do the opposite. It doesn't have a huge battery and I didn't expect anything special here, however they say its range is 20 to 25 miles, 30 to 40 kilometers. Usually the claimed range means what your scooter is capable of in perfect conditions. During my full range test I managed to get 25 miles in single eco mode and actually I got some charge left in my battery. What's really impressive I got 17 miles in real world conditions going full speed during my max speed and hill tests and I actually got 40% battery left. Again, it pretty much destroys the advertised numbers. The scooter has different speed modes, cruise control, so basically it has all the settings available for your personal needs. Here is one more positive aspect. The scooter has way better acceleration than I expected. I film a drag race with its bigger brother. I will show it in the end of this video, so stay tuned for that one. Dual motors climb any hill with ease, even if you're over 220 pounds or 100 kilograms, the scooter has that extra gear and power. Overall, for the price you pay, the specs are really impressive. I didn't notice any quality issues, there is no stem wobble, it has the same stem structure like we see it on the Nandrobot D6 Plus. I have had mine for over a year, it's still as solid as it was when I first got it. The weight of the scooter is 65 pounds or 29 kilograms, which is a bit heavy but it's due to the fact that you get a full suspension here, dual brakes, really comfortable wide deck, dual motors. I mean that's a full set of features in a compact electric scooter. Me personally I didn't expect it to be lightweight. And of course it's way more compact than the Nandrobot D6 Plus. 
We have a full set of controls here on the handlebars, an ignition key for security, a very bright display with all the information you need about your battery, your ride distance, speed and so on, comfortable grips with Nandrobot branding, here we got the main light switch, turn light switch, it also has brake lights and a horn. I really love the lights here, there are two LED deck lights, they look awesome in the dark. Definitely 10 out of 10 to the lights here. The scooter has super smooth double suspension, no problems going over different terrain. The Lightning is not meant for off-roading, it's not an off-road scooter, however taking shortcuts is not an issue for the Lightning. The brakes are really good, those are mechanical brakes plus electronic brakes, they stop you in no time very smooth ones. The scooter's deck is average in terms of size. It has enough space for a rider like me. I'm 6.1 or 1 meter 85 centimeters and it doesn't feel small. The scooter also features that metal footrest. Overall riding the scooter is really comfortable. And here is probably the big one. The scooter has solid tires and this is a huge advantage in my opinion. I agree your ride quality might suffer. At the same time, uh, I would say this is not a deal breaker. The scooter feels great on smooth surfaces and uh, even off-roading. They do feel too hard from time to time, but that's a thing that I got used to pretty quickly. Overall, having solid tires give you peace of mind. You don't have to worry about flats ever. As a part of this video, I'm also comparing the Nandrobot Lightning to the Nandrobot D6 Plus. They look pretty similar. Nandrobot Lightning is pretty much a smaller version of the D6 Plus with 8 inch tires uh, versus 10 inch. Also the specs of the D6 are slightly better. As you might have guessed, the D6 Plus is faster than the Lightning and has a bit better range. The D6 Plus is slightly bigger than the Lightning too. When I first got it, I was really impressed by its acceleration. However, I was 100% sure that D6 Plus had better acceleration. But here is what happened during our test. Ready, set, go! The Lightning was neck and neck with the D6 Plus until they both reached 27 28 miles per hour. After that point, the D6 Plus showed that it has way higher top speed. The Lightning was pretty much stuck at 30 miles per hour, as the D6 Plus continued the acceleration until it reached its top speed of 40 miles per hour. Basically, both scooters have the same acceleration performance over short distances. If you use your scooter for daily commute in a city full of traffic, you won't notice any difference in speed between the D6 Plus and Lightning. So here is my conclusion. For a commuter scooter, the Nandrobot Lightning is packed with features from top to bottom. Some of my favorites are solid tires, the best-in-class suspension, really good battery, impressive acceleration and that simple robust fold-in mechanism. I don't say it's a perfect scooter, the solid tires feel way too hard on some surfaces, but that's a thing that I got used to pretty quickly. Also, me personally, I enjoy bigger electric scooters more than the compact ones, but surprisingly the Nandrobot Lightning has everything you need in a compact package. And also it's a really good deal if you're on a tight budget. I made my research and I noticed the price is very competitive. I compared the Lightning to its competitor 08X and for pretty much the same specs you pay $200 more. That's it guys, thanks for watching, let me know what electric scooter do you want me to review next. Smash that like button, subscribe to my channel and see you in my next videos.